probably you have seen them somewhere, sometime. Maybe you've watched as they frolicked in the ocean. Could be you've caught their act at some seaside tourist attraction. What I can tell you about these guys is they're, they're able to figure out problems. They're capable of jealousy. They're capable of, what do you call this, love? Surely you've noticed that dolphin face permanently posed in what appears to be a perpetual grin. And maybe you've heard the stories, too. Tales of how they've rescued drowning swimmers or how children play games with them in the surf. They could kill us in a second after all. They're strong and they're brutes, you know, but, but they're very gentle and very sensitive and, and shy and cautious and nervous. For thousands of years, we've wondered about them. Roman writings make mention of this friendly creature from the deep. Even Stone Age drawings depict dolphins. You develop a relationship so that they are very, very close friends of yours. You know them. Somebody, an ancient philosopher, once said the dolphin is the only creature who chooses to associate with man with no other thought of reward than his company. I think some of the funny things, too, that show that they have a sense of humor is they'll come up and they'll give you a kiss and they might have a mouthful of water and they just might drench you in the meantime. But to think that dolphins are humans of the sea, some sort of ocean-going good humor man, which is what many of us seem to think, well, that's not true. And it's unfair, unfair to the dolphins. They're aliens. I mean, they might as well come from another planet. This, perhaps, is a pelican's eye view of the Dolphin Research Center, Grassy Key. It's where that previously mentioned remarkable research takes place. But before we get to that, before we show you any of the testing, the analysis, let us simply show you around this unique place, along with the humans and dolphins who work and play here. The laboratory is a wet one, and what's amazing is that the underwater pens the dolphins live in are part of the gulf itself. No concrete tanks here. A chain-link fence is wrapped around an acre and a quarter of gulf. It's the only thing separating the dolphins from the open sea. Absolutely. Gulf of Mexico. Mother Nature gives us our filtration, sunshine, backdrop, the whole nine yards. Jane Rodriguez, her husband Mandy, their two children, they live here at the center. Jane and Mandy have been here 10 years. They were here when the place was a tourist attraction. But two and a half years ago, the powers that be took the dolphin show down the road to Key West. And for the moment, this place is pure research. This is my family, and there's no two ways about it. I mean, how can you deny a family like this? Look at this face, huh? Such devotion explains one thing, why these dolphins stay put. True, that fence is there, but any self-respecting dolphin can jump it or find a hole underneath, which these dolphins do sometimes, but they almost always return immediately. Hey, you know, this is like staying at the Hilton here. Most definitely. The Dolphin Research Center is like an underwater resort, complete with room service. Here you go, Pops. These animals live in a very low-stress situation. I don't know if you've noticed we have unusually chubby dolphins. They are fed a great deal of fish. They're pampered um, and pretty much spoiled, and so they know they've got a good thing going. Many of the dolphins here are on vacation, R&R, &R, just like any South Florida snowbird. You see, these underwater apartments provide welcome relief from showbiz, meaning that many of these dolphins are performers stars of underwater shows all over the country. They're brought here to recuperate from the constant performing in concrete tanks before wide-eyed audiences. Such a life is living in a fishbowl, and the dolphins respond to such stress the way we might. Illness, loss of appetite, even ulcers. But here, in such a natural environment, they thrive. Charlotte Garrigan, once a third grade school teacher, has been a dolphin trainer for nine years. They'll start bringing you presents. They'll start bringing you things out of the pool. Sometimes they'll bring uh, seaweed. Mandy one time was lucky enough to get a seahorse. One of the dolphins carefully brought it on her tongue and handed him a seahorse. It was beautiful. Of course, there are the regulars, the dolphins who have been here for decades, 
Mr. Gipper and Nat and Little Bit and Teresa. A lot of our dolphins, I know, miss people. I know they miss them. And uh, if somebody walks in like you today when you're coming in, the heads are up and they're checking you out. And so, who's that, you know? And they love it. They really do. Speaking of things they love, dolphins love, shall we say, the mating game. It's a game they play constantly. Mr. Gipper was in the front show pool. Gipper broke through four separate gates overnight to get in with B, was in with her one night, we separated them the next day, and uh, almost exactly, it was exactly 365 days later, B gave birth, and we didn't even know she was pregnant at that stage of the game. <laughs> the dolphins also seem to have a skill that we might consider almost mystical. The dolphins' echolocation system, it's so powerful, they say you can toss anything in the water, and the dolphin can find it. They use sound waves underwater to both navigate and find objects. They send out little pulses of sound, and by listening to the way the echoes come back to them, they can get an exact idea of what everything around them looks like. Let's put that to the test. My car key. Go get it, Nat. Let's hope he finds it. After all, it's a long walk home. Very good. Look at that. You get a fish for that. How about that? By now, you probably believe the dolphin's a fascinating animal and that this is a fascinating place. But what about the research they do? Exactly what are they learning here about the dolphin? That's coming up next. Please take the stiff, formal approach. Sometimes, one can learn about dolphins simply by playing a game. Any game. As you see, they don't get tired of it very fast. Edwin Gardner is the head of education here at Dolphin Research Center. I personally tend to relate to dolphins as if they were uh, like, I would say, two to three-year-old children, barely pre-verbal children. And the kind of games that I play with them is really what gives me that idea. Um, yes, fish! The fellow here in the tower is Ron Reisman. He just got his master's degree in computer science. Ron's setting up what could be called an action word test for Nat the Dolphin. Nat! Retrieve! Yes? Yes! Fish! Good boy. Very good. It works this way. Objects are tossed in the water. Then, Ron's computer programmed with simulated dolphin sounds. Each sound has a different meaning. This one means under. This one means over. This one means retrieve. Next, retrieve. The dolphin sounds are put through an underwater loudspeaker. Objective here is to see if Nat will respond correctly. Yes! Fish! He's excited! He's, he's psyched! See the body movement? Yeah. Over! So what does it all mean? Well, obviously, it's communication of a sort with another species. Perfect! But more importantly, Nat hasn't been tested on this in a year and a half. In other words, he's had a chance to forget. But he didn't forget. During the toughest, most rigorous part of the testing, he got 25 out of 27 correct, 93%. What is your judgment on how Nat did today? Great. All this indicates Nat has long-term memory. That is significant. And could it mean that Nat has a high intelligence, an intelligence even greater than that which we have already granted the dolphin? Could it be so? It's gotten to the point where I never say anything about intelligence in general. I don't know what it means anymore. I used to, um, but then I started trying to test it. Um, and after you think about it for a while, you don't know what it is. Uh, That's a good answer and a good way to close this story because there's so much we don't know about the dolphin. And while it would be easy and fun to make sweeping statements, remember that grand claims don't always have the virtue of being true. So many questions about their intelligence, their sensitivity, how they communicate,
how we can communicate with them. Are they sophisticated? Or are they simpler than we imagine? No answers tonight. Not yet. But that's okay, because discovery rarely happens by way of instant revelation. It's more of a painstaking, piece-by-piece -piece process. And, in a century or so, when our great-grandchildren have the answers, they can look back and appreciate these humans and dolphins who have worked so hard to give them those answers. Discovery, built on a foundation of research, theories, observation, dedication, and love. It's a great first step.